In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is Kenda McDonald. Hello! Hello! And we are here today because, Kenda, wave, wave it in their faces. Waving. This is really good for audio. Um, yes. <laughs> um, Kenda is waving her brand new book, which just arrived today, which Yay. is super exciting. Well, not today that you're listening to the podcast, today that we're recording the podcast. Um, and it's really exciting. Kenda, tell us about your book. Oh, Okay. So it's all about how we evolve to survive and not necessarily to buy things and the implications that this has for our marketing. Awesome. Yes. And with ultimately the aim to help us sell more shit. Yes. But not just to sell more shit and not just to make more money and higher profits because you will do, but also to do it in a way that your customers enjoy the process. Yes. By hacking their brains. Yes. Hence being called Hack the Buyer Brain. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> and it is a great book. I've read it a couple of times because I have um, helped Kenda put it together. And it is fab. Yes, oh, thank you. It's fab. So, um, but I wanted to talk to you today about your writing process because mm-hmm. I know that everybody everybody who writes a book struggles. It is a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's also <laughs> a lot of fun. Yes. Um, and so I wanted to ask, well, what, did you, what did you struggle with most? Oh, <laughs> Starting? Mm-hmm. I think starting and motivation, probably the two biggest ones. Okay. So um, when I started out the process, I had no idea how to write a book, like no idea. And so I did the usual kind of thing, which is go off and research the living shit out of something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I just went off and I just spent so much time researching and I just hit brick wall after brick wall after brick wall. Either the information out there wasn't great or I didn't trust the person who created the information in the first place because they didn't even have a book. How can you tell me how to write a book? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so it was a frustrating process getting started. And eventually I ended up looking at other people's books that I liked and just emulating that. But it was a difficult process to go through. And then while I was going through the process as well, staying motivated, I still had a business to run. Yeah. You know, and it like it did completely take over my life. Um, but I still had other priorities, so it, it was quite frustrating, the process, for the most part, yeah. Okay, so what specifically stopped you from getting started, do you think? <laughs> probably a little bit of imposter syndrome. Okay. Probably, there was definitely, I knew I needed to write a book, and I wanted to write a book, that, that age-old, you know, glorified business card positioning thing, that's why I wanted to write a book. But then I very quickly realized that's not my bag. Mm-hmm. Like when I do something, I do I do it. Like I do all of it, yes. you know. And the, the, the point of doing something is for it to be good. And I wanted it very quickly. I wanted it to be a good book. Good. I didn't just want to write a book. I wanted to write a book that people would use. I wanted to write a book that would sell well. I wanted, I wanted to have a good, decent thing. And then there was the fear of... I don't know how to fucking write a book. <laughs> I don't know how to write a book. What right and what authority do I have to write on the subject? Um, who am I to kind of be above my station? I'm quite young in, in my industry. Um, you know, do I have the expertise to write a book? And like, I basically just folded in on myself several times throughout the process and just procrastinated by researching more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a really, okay, so yeah, tell mm. us about that because I think, or I, well, I know actually that a lot of people procrastinate by doing things that they think are super important. Yes. So tell us about that. So um, there are about 100, 100 references, would you say, in the book? Probably about that, yeah. Um, if you take a gander, which is also great for radio, <laughs> at the back of the office, you see that pile? That's, there's that's a massive right. pile over there. There's a huge pile there and there's another huge pile there. And then if we were to go upstairs into the boxing room, you would find another six folders worth of piles that size. Um, I probably read close to 100 books. I probably researched close to, I don't know, anything like 
um, I think it was like 400 research papers that I read hmm. and went through. Um, and so I just massively over-researched everything because every time I, I kind of felt a little bit insecure, I was like, I'll go find out about that. Hmm. And so in this process, it wasn't just researching like the actual content of the book. It was also researching how to do that thing. Yeah. Um, and so I procrastinated by over-researching and I also procrastinated by creating plans and structures for everything. <laughs> like I had flowcharts, I had various different types of mind mapping software. I think at one point I got into so much trouble with Mike because I had like six subscriptions going <laughs> to different like flow charting <laughs> softwares and different things. And I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna have the best planned book ever. And yes, it was no best book. but no book. <laughs> yeah. No actual book, but the best plan for it, which is what I did. So because I was scared of writing it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> which I think is really super common. Yeah. And I think at this point, um, I ought to get you to um list your credentials out because of all the stuff you said, you know, I'm who am I to write a book? I'm you know, I'm not whatever enough. I'm not whatever enough, I'm not expert enough, you know, it's it's above my station, all the rest of it. So tell us about your background. Okay. <laughs> So that people listening who are thinking, yeah, ah, yeah. So I uh, studied forensic psychology. Mm -hmm. That's my background. Um, so I have a background in that. Um, then I started my own my own company sort of five years ago. I was the first um, female Infusionsoft certified partner, the youngest female Infusionsoft certified partner under the age, the first one under the age of twenty. I was the first one outside of the U uh, outside of the US. Um, I was very quickly, when we launched our company, we became the leading Infusionsoft implementation company, the first behavioral marketing automation, um, expert outside of the U S as well. Um, yeah, 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 all of <laughs> yeah. that, all of that stuff. And she still didn't feel like she could write a book. Yes. Which is so which And the reason that I'm pointing that out is because it's super common and, you know, not every, you don't have to have a degree in what you do. You can't have a degree. There isn't a degree to be had in some in some fields no. and but if you've been doing what you do for as long as you do and as deeply as you've been doing it for you are you know you are you are way expert enough do you know the weird thing was like I've won several awards now as well so I, I do get to say that I'm an award-winning whatever yeah I've been nominated for the top 100 females in the UK female mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in the UK all that kind of stuff and I am a top 100 and that's all really interesting. And then when I speak to the other top 100 women and the other award winners, they all have the same thing that they don't feel like they deserve the award. Yeah. It's such a weird thing. It's very strange. And it's so insidious, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's, and it's, yeah. I think men have it as well, but I think we suffer from it worse. Yeah, I wasn't saying it was only yeah. a female thing. No, it, it was just really weird when yeah. we were in the room, yeah. how many women were talking about how they felt like they shouldn't be there. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing ever. It's like you've been nominated by other people. You can't nominate yourself. Yeah. So you have to be nominated by basically a stranger. You get nominated, then you stood in a room at the House of Lords, like having tea and having this amazing experience. And all of us were feeling like we shouldn't be there. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> Which is hilarious. So if you feel like that, the imposter syndrome, everybody suffers from it, I think, to a certain extent. You are not alone and it's, you know, it's perfectly normal. So, um... Can I tell them about Jen? Yeah, of course you can. So the lovely Jen... Can I tell her... Can I say her surname? Do you think she'll care? Oh, well, Jen, you will have... If you listen to the yeah. Lanzarote podcast, you will have heard Jen. She heard was Jen. At, she's yeah. my American friend. She's lovely. So when we were in Lanzarote... I had a complete meltdown. Hi, Jen. Oh. Hi, Jen. I love you, Jen. <laughs> I miss you, Jen. Uh, I had a complete meltdown in Lanzarote, and I was doing the last chapter of the book. And I had left the chapter and procrastinated about that chapter, and it was the behavior chapter of the book. And it was the one that had the most kind of science and psychology. Now, four months before the end of my degree, I had to drop out because my previous boss uh, left us in a lot of shit with a lot of of his company debt that I had to pay off yeah. it was a really awful situation um and I had to drop out because I couldn't afford to pay for university and because of that I carry this yoke around my neck all the time that I'm not qualified to talk about these things I'd literally did done my dissertation I'd done everything it was just my final exams that I had to do um and from my track record I definitely would have passed them hmm. but I constantly kind of carried that around so I didn't feel like I was qualified enough to write the behavior chapter and Jen was listening to me and she said what would you so what would you need to do 
in order to feel like you were qualified? And I said, well, I probably want at least my master's. And she went, okay. And if you had your master's, what would you want? I said, well, I'd probably want my PhD. I've always wanted a PhD. And she goes, okay. And then what? And I was like, I don't know. And she said, I have a PhD and I still feel the same way. I was like, she said, she literally said to me that she's constantly waiting for someone to tap her on the shoulder and catch her out. And it was this weird moment where like, it was like everything settled. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm going to carry this around for the rest of my life. So I may as well just get on with it. And I did. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. She's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> but, sometimes you just need somebody to show you that everybody feels this way. Yeah. It doesn't matter how high at the top of your tree you are. You know, it's, you know the bloody. I'm just trying to think of somebody at the top of their tree now. Yeah, all I can think of is the Pope, and yeah. I'm not sure he climbs trees. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure that he wakes up every now and then and thinks, "Jeepers, how did I get here?" God put him there. It's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> okay, so um, so that was one of your turning points. What else did you find helped you to get your book done? Um helped me to get my book done yeah what what got you unstuck what unfucked your book <laughs> what unfucked my book um Lanzarote massively going away and spending some time with other with other business owners a support network um so I'm very very fortunate to know some very very lovely people yourself included and listeners now <laughs> um but uh yeah I had a great support network of people that I relied on and even when things got really tough, like I got some really bad feedback, some really, really hectic feedback. Yeah, that's given that gave me the rage. Yeah. So I got some really hardcore feedback from somebody that I really trusted and respected. And it wasn't like everyone's going to get negative feedback about their book. There are going to be people who don't like it. And I'm fully aware of that. It's still going to upset me, yeah. but I'm fully aware that that is going to happen. Yeah. But this feedback was mean. It was mean. It was mean and it and it wasn't true. And it wasn't helpful. It wasn't helpful. It was not constructive. It was just mean. It was just mean. It, there was no shit sandwich. No. It was just shit. <laughs> and it was horrible. And that froze me up for about two weeks. But if it wasn't for my husband and um, Becca and and you and like all of my support network, people that I had the opportunity to talk to and like help me get out of that situation, I would have just, I probably never would have published it. I never would have hit go on it. Um, well, you bloody would because I would have made you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's like, what if I didn't know you, Vicky? Oh, it would have yeah. been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would have been really hard if I hadn't have had a support network. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you said in your book, it takes a it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to write a book. It's yeah. true. Books aren't books aren't a solo enterprise. They're not. They're you, not. you think they are because they got one person's name on the on the cover. No, that's why we have acknowledgements. Yeah, <laughs> mine are very long. Yeah. <laughs> mine are always very long. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so your book is written now. Um, mm. I'm gonna we're gonna have more conversations in the future about yes. what you struggled with and all the rest of it. But I really want you to talk about what you're doing with your book launch because it is so fun. Yeah. I've been having a great time with it. Um, obviously, being in behavioural marketing automation, yes, <laughs> I should know what I'm doing with okay. the book launch. First of all, um, <laughs> Kendra, the book that we just sh- showed you, which is. Like, obviously, you could see that on the podcast version of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Go and look at the video. It's really good. The book that we just showed you is her final proof copy. And so it's like the final version, as we yes. speak, is being printed. Now you're listening to it. It's already been printed. Yes. I'm doing time travel in my head. It's very bad. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I totally have no idea where that was going. It's been a very long day. It has been a very long day. You look a bit spaced out. Spaced out. A bit spaced out. You are. It's getting really bad now. Drinking water as well. Um... Um, was the I book is printed. That? No, did you? Yeah. What? What were you trying to say? I literally <laughs> have no idea. I feel like too oh, old. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you've been you've been pre-selling it. How many have you sold before it's even done? Uh, just over. We've got 121 founders who bought it from the pre-pre-sale, but we have just over 150 now who cool. have purchased the book, and they have paid for the first pallet. Which is so, which is yeah. why people. This is why we pre-sell our books because yes. then you can pay for the printing. Because the printing is pricey. It is. I <laughs> it mean, is per expensive. book it's cheap, but you buy bulk. But you so buy bulk. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so I would not have been able to have afforded it 
if I had have gone any other way, I would have had to have chosen something like Amazon Print On Demand, and I really didn't want that. Yeah. Um, I found out some stuff a little while ago about Amazon's Print On Demand, about their um, paper policies. They don't use sustainable paper. No. Um, because, well, I, you, you'd expect that as well, because they're so massive, I don't think they really care. So I was really anti wanting to do that. So I realized I had to buy a big palette of books. Yeah. And yeah, so I set up a massive pre-launch where I got people really excited about it. Um, I'm quite fortunate that I do public speaking. Um, and so when I've been doing talks anywhere or when I've been even just at networking sessions, I will kind of, you know, when people ask me what I'm up to, I'll tell them that I'm just, just about to finish writing the book. And then I have something called the golden ticket. Oh, tell us about the yes. golden ticket. So the golden ticket is a, a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's about postcard size. And it is gold, as yeah. you would expect. And it's very similar to the Willy Wonka chocolate factory awesome. type of golden ticket. <laughs> and the idea is um, it says, gosh, you're awesome on the front of it. And if I really like someone, I give them a golden ticket right um or if i'm talking on stage and the organizers always check with the organizers that they're okay with you do this kind of stuff um and if the organizers have okayed it then i will say come chat to me afterwards and i'll give you a golden ticket cool and the golden ticket allows people to get a free pdf version of the book right yes. um and so i had started building in the last year of kind of doing all the editing and everything, I started building a list of people who wanted the book, mm -hmm. but they'd got the free PDF version of the book. And so I got people really excited about that. So I have pre-sold 150 copies, but I have an additional 130 who have asked for the PDF version. Okay. So I actually have like 200 and whatever, yeah. nearly 300 people who want the book, which is great because I've been doing the public speaking stuff and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I got people really excited about the pre-sale. Um, and then we pre-sold it. And when we pre-sold it, I think that's where the magic happened. Because what we did was we got people really excited about it. I did a couple of videos and everything. And then the second someone bought from the pre-sale, I sent a thank you email that was really, really personal and asked them if I could thank them publicly on social media about it. And people loved it. People love getting shouted out. Yeah, people <laughs> really, really loved it. And I loved it because it was so much fun. Yeah. And we were just engaging with people. And it went fucking nuts on social. <laughs> I think we'd sold about 50 copies. And then it picked up on social. And we sold the 100 just off of the social stuff. Nice. So every time someone bought and then replied back to my email with their social details, I would then do a little shout out with a little gif and a, and a, and a fun little thing. Um, and then their friends would get to see it because they'd retweet it or they'd share it or whatever the case was. And quite a few people's friends bought from that. And so people got really excited about the process. And it was really nice to share my excitement with somebody else because, yes. you know, it was a lot of fun. So we hit social really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have also been, um, as people have been getting really excited, feeding off of our excitement, I've been screenshotting all of their social proof um, and saving that for later. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've done really well with that, but we have something cooler coming up. Yes, which I am totally <laughs> swiping for my book launch, but yeah, tell us, about, tell us about your cooler thing. Okay, so the idea is that I'm not going to be able to raise this village <laughs> all by myself, and I want to raise an empire, not, yeah. not just a village. Um, so I want people to share it with their friends. Yes. Okay, so I want to be able to control word of mouth a little bit better. So we're using something called UpViral, and the idea is when someone purchases the book or the people who have already currently purchased or are getting the PDF, we are going to hack people's word of mouth. Okay. And how are you going to do that? <laughs> With swag. Awesome. Everybody likes a swag Everyone bag. likes swag. So... The idea is there is a workbook that goes with the book. Yeah, it's a really good workbook. <laughs> yeah, which, which Vicky's been working through. I have. Yeah, so there's a workbook that goes with the book that we will eventually sell. But I want to use it more for promotional purchase, purposes. Yeah. Poipuses. 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 Parsnips. <laughs> Parsnips. <laughs> <laughs> there's an intro there. Um, we may explain it later. Yes. Oh. And so the workbook, the idea of the workbook is that if people refer it, refer the book and get their friend to buy it they get the workbook for free instead of having to purchase it right 
But if they manage to get three of their friends to buy the book, they get some free t-shirts. Nice. And they're really cool t-shirts. They are. And they're great t-shirts that say, I hacked brains on them. Or a t-shirt that has the logo of the book. Because people have uh, really enjoyed the branding. It's a really beautiful book cover, actually. Which, um, again, perfect for radio. Um, Yeah, (laughs) perfect for radio. It's got a really nice sort of like, what is that, 60s design? Yeah, it's retro, yeah. It's very retro, it's very on trend. It's very primary colours. Yes. Opposite sides of the colour wheel. Exactly. Yeah. And it it sticks out a little bit, but people really like the design. So we're getting some t-shirts, we have t-shirts made, that have the the logo and everything on it. And so if people get three of their friends to buy, then they get that t-shirt. But they can only get the I Hack Brains t-shirt through that. You cannot buy the t-shirt. You can only get it if you refer your friends to buy it. Yeah, top tip, people. Yeah. <laughs> so that is all being managed really easily through something called UpViral. Okay. And what happens is when people purchase on the thank you page, they will go to UpViral. We, you know, talk about the swag, get all excited about the swag. Um, and then at the click of a button, they can push that to their chosen social media platform it pushes it with an image and some blurb and their unique referral link. Nice. And then they get given points depending on how many people sign up. And when they receive enough points, they can redeem it for the right thing. Cool. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So that's up viral. I'm really excited with it because um, if you think about, even if we get like 20 people to get the t-shirt, that means that we've got an extra, I can't do the maths 60. now, 60 people yeah. Yeah, come in just from their friends and each of those people have the capability of referring for swag. Another three people. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, the, the whole swag concept is great. And also anybody who refers them and their friend gets a little pin badge. Nice. Little little pin badge with a little brain on it. So we're, we're really quite excited about it because people have loved the branding and everything. So I think they're really going to like the swag. Yeah. Yeah. The, the branding works really nicely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, it's got me thinking about all sorts of things. Yeah, <laughs> flamingos with books and Ooh. all sorts. Of things. Ooh, flamingos with pens. With pens, flamingo pens. Flamingo pens. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's been that's been great, and I I really hope that Kenda's story of struggles has um, made anyone who is is thinking, oh, I can't write a book because of reasons. That actually, you know, Kenda's just written a book. Yes. It's here. I'm, with, I'm looking at it right now, and she's struggled with all the same stuff you did and more that we haven't even yeah. talked about. Yeah. Um, and then once you've got your book, all the cool stuff that you can do to launch it. Um, and there's going to be more cool stuff that I'm going to be getting Kenda to do with the book later as well, and more cool stuff that I will be doing with my book. So, um, so yeah, write your write your book. Write your book. It's good for your business. We've already had speaking gigs from it and it's not even live. Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah. Very powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Powerful thing. But don't just write a book because it's like the next thing to do. Write a book because you've got something to say that you can't not say. Yeah. Super important. And because when writing the book, I think one of the best things it did for me was actually solidified exactly how much I know about things. Yeah. That is a hidden benefit of writing a book is you realize just how much you know about what you do. And I had the same experience, you know, I was writing my book and I was like, jeepers, I actually know a a, a, a deep amount of, I I know what I'm doing. And it comes as a surprise to you. One of my beta readers who read it sat down and (laughs) he sat down for 10 hours and he's a sales guy. It's hard for sales guys to sit down for 10 hours and do anything. <laughs> he sat down for 10 hours and read the book cover to cover with a mind mapping software open and mapped out the entire thing. And I think that was probably one of the most powerful things for me that somebody had sat down for that period of time, had consumed it and really enjoyed it. Yeah. And, you know, he's he runs a massive agency and he refers back to he's got it in a folder he refers back to it all the time and like gets it out to talk to clients about it now he's going to have a physical copy of the book to talk about it and like i might have all my kinds of imposter syndrome but he thinks i'm awesome it's like it's really cool isn't it it is really cool. it's really cool yeah yeah it's really really cool yeah so we've sadly reached the end of the time we've got so kenda where can people buy your book oh they can go to hackthebiobrain.com and they can buy it from there. Yay! And it will soon be on Amazon once Vicky helps me make it sound good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a bit more work to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hackthebiobrain.com. Um, the link is in the show notes Amazing. or underneath this video if you're watching the video version. Um, yeah, buy the book. Honestly, it is such a good read. 
And it's just so fascinating as well. Um, if you want to understand how our brains work and triggers and how to start people's habit, how to start habits in people. Yeah. Just, it's just great. It's, it's, a, it's a great book. Yeah. Thank well you. Well done. Thank you. Should be really proud. So yeah, um, I'll be back same time next week with Joe. Joe will finally be back, I promise, because I know that everyone's been missing <laughs> Joe because of We've, I've been interviewing people quite a lot recently, which is great, <laughs> but people miss Joe. Joe will be back. Um, if you've listened to every single episode of this podcast, remember you can email me your postal address and I will send you a little gift that is exclusive to people who have listened to every episode of the podcast. You'll be in a little club. Um, and if you like this podcast, please go and rate us five yes. stars and review us. Leave us a nice review and share it with your friends and family and, and you know maybe people who you think might be annoyed by it. I don't know. <laughs> And yeah, I'll be back same time next week. So have a great time, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Kenda. Bye, guys. Bye. Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast. Right. And if you're still listening... <laughs> Parsnips. Get, get parsnips. Old, old parsnips. This yeah. is probably going to be one of those jokes where it's going to be like, oh, you had to be there. But yes. I feel like we ought to explain it for people we, who we are still listening. We should explain it. We should explain it. So, in the fridge. <laughs> in the fridge. In the fridge oh, last there, night. Oh, there's a drawer of woe. Everybody has a fridge drawer of woe. Everybody has courgettes that have gone wrong at some time or another Liquified. and turned into mush in the fridge. Yeah. And we had some parsnips that old had parsnips. wrinkled. Old parsnips, they'd, they'd, they'd gone very wrinkly. <laughs> and um, because I had a stroke of genius, yeah. I went, oh, there are past nips. Past nips. <laughs> past nips. Past nips. <laughs> They're past it, past nips. And then we also said, what did we say? That when we're old, we'll have past nips. We'll have past nips. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah that's the story of the past yes. tips okay thanks bye bye <laughs>